Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. So in this session of atomic structure, we'll start with Rutherford Ford's experiment. Okay, and we'll go into the details of what was the experiment about, the experimental setup, what were the observations, and finally the conclusion of this experiment. Okay. So the experiment conducted by Rutherford Ford was called Alpha Particle Scattering Experiment. Okay, why we'll just see that in a minute so the experimental setup of ruthard ford looked something like this okay so again this is just a rudimentary diagram it's not the exact replica of the experiment carried out by ruthard ford but it is spread here just for our understanding so what he did was okay so he took alpha particles alpha particles from a radioactive source all right and these alpha particles okay this particles of some kind were bombarded on a gold foil okay on a gold foil so this gold foil present over here in yellow color okay this gold foil this gold foil was of very low thickness okay so for example if you you can see the paper the paper of your notebook on which you write the gold foil was even thinner than that paper okay so that is what was the aim he wanted as less number of atoms present in that thin sheet of gold foil as possible okay he didn't want a lot of atoms present over there so that is why thin gold foil was taken why only gold because gold can be easily converted into thin sheets Okay, so in comparison to other elements which might be present with him, gold was most easily converted into very thin sheets. That's why he chose gold. Okay, then alpha particle. Alpha particle are emitted by radioactive substances. So this radioactive substance is present in a lead box. All right, this is a lead box so designed. Okay, it is so designed that only particles. only particles which fall at 90 degree angles to the foil that is which directly go perpendicular to the foil are emitted out okay rest of the particles alpha particles are absorbed inside the box itself okay so for such an arrangement we use okay a calorimeter an equipment called calorimeter to ensure that only the particles which will fall perpendicular to gold foil reach the foil okay so this is the lead box in which a radioactive source is present this radioactive source emits alpha particle and this alpha particles then travel at very high velocities at to towards the gold foil okay and then they will strike the gold foil okay gold foil which contains the atoms of gold all right and uh, that will result in some kind of changes in the trajectory of this alpha particle and to see how that trajectory has changed okay he surrounded the foil with a fluorescent screen okay that is a screen or any say any circular object all right coated with fluorescent material like zinc sulfide okay so that when the alpha particle okay when the alpha particles rebounds okay bounces back or collides with the screen after collision with gold foil we can observe its trajectory okay because when it strikes the zinc sulfide screen it will emit light or flashes of light and through that we can see in which direction did the alpha particle go okay so this was the basic experimental setup made by the ruther ford okay and two of his students actually so now what they did was they started bombarding alpha particles on the gold foil okay one by one okay one time two time three time 10000 times even 1 lakh times okay so this much how they did this much how how much hard work we they did all right this was the amount of their patience after these many tries they finally were able to make some important observations okay so what were these these observations see the first observation was that most of the alpha particles passed undeflected that is to say when the alpha particle 
ट्रैवल्ड टूवर्ड्स द गोल फॉइल ओके टूवर्ड्स द गोल फॉइल दे जस्ट सिंपली ओके दे सिंपली पास थ्रू द गोल फॉइल लाइक देर इज नथिंग प्रेजेंट ओवर देर दैट इज दे पास अनडिफ्लेक्टेड दिस वॉज ट्रू फॉर प्रिटी मच एवरी अल्फा पार्टिकल विच वॉज बम्बॉड बट सेकेंड ऑब्जर्वेशन मेड वॉज अ वेरी स्मॉल फ्रैक्शन ऑफ पार्टिकल्स वेर डिफ्लेक्टेड बाय एक्यूट एंगल्स दैट इज टू से दे वेर डिफ्लेक्टेड इन से दिस डायरेक्शन और इन दिस डायरेक्शन ओके दैट इज दे स्टिल पास थ्रू द गोल्ड फॉइल बट बट they were deflected by small angles all right that is less than angles less than 90 degree okay and another observation was that one in 20000 particle was deflected by an obtuse angle that is to say it basically bounced back the gold foil okay so to those alpha particles the gold foil acted as say a bullet proof vest okay or say some kind of very strong material which can bounce back the alpha particles it's like throwing a ball at the wall okay and the ball comes back and hits you all right so these some very few very rarely like one in 20000 so if, if they had not performed this experiment 20000 times there was no chance okay or there was very low chance that they would have observed an alpha particle bouncing back the gold foil okay so three kinds of alpha particles we will be observing over here those which go undeflected okay those which are deflected by very small angles and those which show very large deflections that is by obtuse angle or to say which are bounced back by the gold foil all right so once again let's look at the figure so you see this is the area okay of no deflection okay and then from here to here you can say small deflections all right so these are the areas of small deflection of alpha particle and now this alpha particle this coming back over here okay so this alpha particle is the one which bounces back from the gold foil okay so this was the observation of the experiment so let's try and analyze these observations okay what do they actually mean so if you look at the analysis part see what what the what rutherford expect, expected when he was bombarding alpha particle so first why alpha particles okay so you might not have heard about alpha particles before so alpha particles are basically considered to be very heavy pa particles okay or particles with good amount of momentum that is appreciable momentum alpha particles are actually nucleus of helium okay they look like this they have a charge of plus 2 okay plus 2 unit charge all right and they have mass of 4 amu okay so you can basically say they have quite okay quite an appreciable amount of positive charge and quite an appreciable amount of mass in them okay so they will have good amount of inertia all right so he used alpha particles because they will have good amount of momentum when you bombard them towards another thing all right so before this experiment was carried out most of the people knew about thomson's atomic model so they considered that atom is a solid sphere okay so this means they considered that everything in the world is made up of atom so the gold foil okay the gold foil will be made up of solid spheres okay which means the gold foil will be a completely a solid thing okay which we do see even with our naked eye that gold is a solid object okay so he was expecting that alpha particles all right that alpha particles will pass through this okay will pass through this solid object without much deflection why because alpha particles are radioactive part okay particles due to radioactivity which have very high momentum 
okay and the mass of atom is distributed over its entire volume okay it is uniformly distributed over its entire volume so okay such uniform distribution of mass cannot cannot deflect a high moment of particle okay it's like saying a fly all right a fly goes towards the truck okay with full speed okay it cannot deflect the truck all right what will happen the fly might get deflected a bit or it can even pass through the truck truck okay it's so small all right it's so small it can even pass through the truck so the alpha particle is small but with very high momentum so it could have easily passed through the gold foil all right with maybe slight changes in its trajectory what thoms what rutherford was not expecting was such such major changes in the trajectory okay like at angles of 60 degree 40 degree and even obtuse angles that some alpha, alpha particles were bounced back so what was happening over there see before we before we analyze what was happening over there you must know that from your studies of physics that two positive charges or two negative charges repel each other okay that is like charges repel each other that is they exert force in opposite directions okay so as to get away from each other whereas like charges like a positive charge whereas like charges like say a positive charge and a negative charge all right it attracts each other okay they attract each other so like charges repel and opposite charges okay opposite charges attract so see when you are bombarding alpha particle you are basically bombarding a particle with plus 2 charge okay so if if this atom had a lot of negative charge if this foil had lot of negative charge the alpha particle would easily get attracted towards the foil and the foil will get attracted towards the alpha particle so there was no way the alpha particle would have bounced back okay if the alpha particle has bounced back from the foil means there was something inside the foil which was trying to okay push the alpha particle away from itself because of this because of this rutherford concluded there was some some amount of strong positive charge present in the atoms of gold okay that is to say that when alpha particle starts to go towards this positive charge okay so there will be forces of repulsion here so alpha particle will start to slow down because this positive charge is trying to push the alpha particle away all right so it will slow down slow down slow down slow down and finally it will okay it will either either bo get bombarded with very low velocity or it might even get bounced back that is completely repelled right and depending on the mass or density of this positive charge okay the angle of alpha particles deviation might vary so it was like it was like something like this all right so you have so you have atoms over here okay of gold there will be some in random arrangement inside the foil and then you start bombarding alpha particles so most of the alpha particles will pass through but some alpha particles will get deflected back okay. so let's see the conclusion which this analysis gives us that most of the space in the atom is going to be empty why again see say this is your atom okay this is your atom if this was completely made up of positive charge then first the positive charge would be so diluted because of uniform distribution the positive charge and mass will be so diluted that all the alpha particles would have completely passed through okay 
but what th- what rutherford observed was that there was some alpha particles which didn't pass through which got deflected back from this point so only those particles which got deflected back had strong force of repulsion so most of the space was completely empty that is why there was no deflection at all zero deflection of the alpha particles trajectory right but some positive charge is situated at the center of the atom in a very small volume why very small volume because only 1 in 20000 alpha particle got bounced back if the positive charge was present in a greater okay greater space or greater volume then more number of alpha particles would have would have suffered okay or would have faced the force of repulsion would have okay felt the force of repulsion and bounced back but only 1 in 20000 so that is why the positive charge is situated at the center and in a very small volume okay and then he also made further calculations of the trajectory and the angle by which various alpha particles were deflected and he also concluded that most of the mass of the atom is concentrated in this small region as well okay it was quite obvious actually because electrons were already discovered so he knew that electrons are of very low mass and if electrons are of very low mass and they are okay and they are not present at the center of the atom so which this means that most of the mass of the atom must be present at the center okay the center which also contains the positive charge inside the atom so that atom in whole is electrically neutral all right so based on this conclusion even rutherford came out with a new atomic model okay and after this the thomson's atomic model okay what was debunked okay so we stopped using it and instead we started studying rutherford's atomic model which we'll see in our next session so until next time and once again thanks for watching edupedia world videos